All right, let's talk some politics this morning. Something that has never, ever happened before. The House Majority Leader defeated in his primary race, Republican Aaron, Eric Cantor of Virginia, knocked out of Congress by Dave Brad, an unknown college professor, or little known, I should say, college professor and political novice. Yeah, this is triggering shockwaves in the GOP. Actually, all of Washington, conservatives, uh, excited about replacing Cantor. Let's bring in our panel, Jason Johnson, HLN contributor, political science professor at Hiram College in Cleveland. I was hoping you'd be here <laughs> yes. with us in Atlanta, but we're glad you're up anyway. Uh, we've got Amy Kremer here, a former chairwoman of Tea Party Express. Uh, good morning to you both. Uh, Amy, I want to start with you. You know, I, I follow you on Twitter, and your <laughs> tweets, I wait for them, especially. I retweeted this one. Let's put this up. So the Tea Party is dead, huh? This is from the 10th after uh, we knew that the Cantor was going to lose. This one also. I've always said that the strength of the Tea Party movement is on a local level. This victory is the proof in the pudding. But another person you think is Laura Ingram from Fox News, right. who actually went out and campaigned for Brad. Right. Uh, she says that the National Tea Party had nothing to do with Brad's win. Here's a quote from her. Not one major Tea Party organization came out and endorsed Brad, supported Brad in any meaningful way. We had a difficult time getting the Tea Party groups and Brad connected. They basically told them, you don't have a chance. They wrote him off. Question is this. Why does or how does the Tea Party have any basis to, to claim this win? Well, first of all, the Tea Party, there are national groups, but the strength of the movement is on a local level. It's the work that's done on the ground. Without the groups across the country and the people on a local level, the major, the national groups would have no role. What would they do? But he didn't but run as a Tea like, Party candidate. It, yeah. Well, the thing is, when you say Tea Party, Tea Party is all about fiscal responsibility, limited government, free markets. And so anybody can be, claim the label of Tea Party or use the label Tea Party. A lot of people are Tea Party and they don't even want to use that label. You know, so it's about the issues. He is a conservative. He ran on conservative principles and values and that's how he won. But it was the people in his district that, in that district that did the hard work. It's boots on the ground passion, fire in the belly, and that can't be bought. You know, it was interesting, the, uh, one of the trending hashtags on Twitter that night was hashtag holy crap. Yes. <laughs> because yes. everybody just was watching and they couldn't believe yes. it. So Jason, I, I think one of the first questions for a lot of people were, Cantor's defeated, what does this mean for immigration reform? What do you think? Well, immigration reform was already dead uh, because nobody really wants to do anything before the midterm. They want to work on this afterwards. And I think a lot of this is going to be people figuring out what does this mean locally? Look, I don't think the National Tea Party can really claim any credit for this. This is like Wayne Gretzky saying he had something to do with the championship last night. No, <laughs> you weren't involved. Okay, you, you didn't have anything to really do with this. And I think this is a simple matter of Eric Cantor wearing out his welcome in the local community, pushing people around too much and not being connected, and a local guy took the position, a college professor, which is something I'm happy to hear about. <laughs> so what does this mean for the president then? Well, I think for the present, look, he, he's got plenty of problems as it is. Uh, you know, Barack Obama's approval ratings have been just mired in the low 40s. Uh, you've got a Democrat, an incumbent Democrat, who might now be losing in the Senate. Barack Obama's primary concern right now is flying around the country and trying to shore up what he can in the U.S. Senate. I don't think immigration reform was ever going to be something that was seriously on the table this year, but I do think the GOP will have a plan by 2016 because they will need young voters and they will need Latino voters to at least look at them if they have any chance of beating Hillary Clinton. So, I, uh, Amy, I want to go to you next because it seems the path is clear for Kevin McCarthy now, as uh, some are saying, to get Cantor's job. How important do you think is it for a Republican, you know, a red state Republican, uh, as leader in the GOP, someone more in tune with grassroots, necessarily, to get a win? Well, I think that, first of all, I wouldn't say Kevin McCarthy's path is clear. Raul Labrador from Idaho just announced yesterday that he's going to um, make a run for that leadership position, which I think would be fantastic. Why not have the entire party or the entire caucus represented? You think he has the support? Absolutely. Okay. And the thing is, outside influences have never really had any impact on the, the leadership um, elections inside the caucuses in both the Senate and the House. But I think it's time the American people step up and engage in that process. Look, Speaker Boehner, there was almost a coup last um, this Congress, you know, for his leadership position. And I believe that Raul Labrador could take this. He absolutely could. We need conservatives. Kevin McCarthy is more of the same. 
He's part of the same leadership team. Why not bring in, is Washington not getting the idea of what's going on in America? That's the problem. They're so removed from reality. They're clueless about what's going on. They need to get outside of the beltway. Amy, I know you are adamantly opposed to anything uh, that approaches amnesty as we have the, the conversation mm -hmm. about immigration. But do you think there can be something, something can be done this this uh, upcoming session? Well, this is the thing, is everybody talks about amnesty. I do believe we need immigration reform. I don't believe that right now is the time to do it. When you talk about amnesty, you're talking about giving people a clear pathway to citizenship. These people that are already here that have broken the law, what about the people still waiting in line and the millions of people that have waited in line already? Yes, I think we need to come together on immigration reform, and Marco Rubio did that when he was part of the Gang of Eight, but he has even stepped back and said, now is not the time for comprehensive immigration. This is the thing. The bottom line is, we can't do anything about immigration until we secure our borders, and our borders are not secure. This administration is not enforcing the laws that we have on the books now. Why would they enforce new laws? Jason Johnson, last thoughts? I'm going to say this. Eric Cantor learned a very, very valuable lesson. All politics are local. And everyone can talk about these national issues like immigration and health care reform. But what this really boils down to is if you want to keep your district, any member of Congress, Republican or Democrat, you got to hang out. You can't just show up all the time with your entourage. Let people see you in, in T-shirt and jeans at Orange Julius every once in a while. And if you don't <laughs> do that, you will lose any position that you have. It doesn't necessarily have to do with national issues. It's connecting locally. All, all right. right. Jason Johnson, I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason Johnson, Amy Kremer. Good to see Thank both you. of you as always. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. So here's a question for you.